Good afternoon everybody, it's your pal Martin Millard here, hope you're going well. We want to wish our followers of the Jewish faith a happy Yom Kippur for today, on the 25th of September 2023. Got my kippah on as usual. Today I am in Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina, the home of where the Abrahamic faiths of Islam, Christianity and Judaism all live in peaceful. Now I'm going to be reading that to you firstly about the history of the Jews in Bosnia and Herzegovina. According to Wikipedia, it spans from the arrival of the first Bosnian Jews as a result of the Spanish Inquisition to the survival of the Bosnian Jews through the Holocaust and the Yugoslav Wars. Judaism and the Jewish community in Bosnia and Herzegovina are one of the oldest and most diverse histories in the former Yugoslav states. It is more than 500 years old. In terms of permanent settlement, the self-governing province of the Ottoman Empire, Bosnia was one of the first few territories in Europe that welcomed Jews after the expulsion from Spain. Because, you know... During the Spanish Inquisition, so many uh, Jews from Spain and Portugal, they came to the Ottoman Empire and they set up like places in Sarajevo, in Istanbul, in Aleppo, in Halifa, and Alexandria. Uh, right now, there are about 281 Jews living in the whole of Bosnia. They speak Bosnian, Hebrew, Yiddish, and only a few of them speak Ladino. Uh, and it's peak the Bosnian Jewish community numbered between 14,000 and 22,000 numbers in 1941. Of, of those 12,000 to 14,000 live in Sarajevo, who comprise 20% of the city's population. The first Jews arrived in Bosnia Herzegovina in period for 1492 to 1497 from Spain and Portugal. As tens of thousands of Jews fled the Spanish and Portuguese Inquisition, Sultan Bayad of the Ottoman Empire welcomed the Jews who were able to reach his ter territory. Shafar Jews fleeing Spain and Portugal were welcomed in and found their way to Bosnia and Herzegovina, Macedonia, Tres, and other areas of Europe under Ottoman control. Jews from the Ottoman Empire began arriving in numbers from the 16th century, Slovenians in Sarajevo. The first Ashkenazi Jews arrived from Hungary in 1686 when the Ottoman Turks were expelled from Hungary. Among them was Tzvah Ashkenazi, who remained in Sarajevo for three years as a rabbi. The Jewish community prospered in Bosnia, living side by side with the Bosnian Muslim neighbours, as one of the largest European centres of Shafak Jews outside of Spain. Now, there are two synagogues in Sarajevo, but only one of them is in current use, the Ashkenazi Synagogue, which we will visit tomorrow on Tuesday because it's closed for young poor. Now, the Shafanic synagogue that's going back much to the 16th century, because that was like the first synagogue built in Sarajevo, and then the Ashkenazi was built in 1902. Uh, there is a Jewish cemetery in the south of Sarajevo where you'll find the tomb of this one man who was a translator. He spoke many different languages, and his tomb is in uh, Hebrew, uh, it's in Arabic and in, in Latin, and it's the only tomb in the world. So you, you can't even find a tomb like that even in Jerusalem. So on Yom Kippur, we only go do a Jewish tour of Sarajevo. So we're in the old part of Sarajevo, which I have to call it like the Ottoman era, a lot because look at all these mosques. Remind you that you're back in Istanbul. I mean. They have the same thing in sculpture. They got like the also like Ottoman Quarter. Anyway, it's raining right now. It's a bit irritating because I only got like two days like left here, and I have to get on the bus back to Vienna on Wednesday. So this is the exact car that Franz Ferdinand and his missus was pregnant at the time, the Archduke of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. They're driving to Sarajevo when. In 1914, they were assassinated by a Bosnian Serb who was standing right there. So they've like engraved his footprints. So it's like from this place on 26th, 28th of June 1914, Gavrilo Princip assassinated the head to the Austro Hungarian throne. And let you know it started World War I, but World War I already started in Africa prior to that. Now here we have the Ashkenazi synagogue that was built in 1902, styled Moorish. You see, the Ashkenazi Jews were migrating actually from Hungary into Bosnia after Hungary fell like from Ottoman rule. So literally in a period of time the Ashkenazis and the Shafadics mixed together. And so 
Uh, this is there's two of the single open daily, but I don't think they'll be open today because it is Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the Jewish faith. But this is an interesting place to visit and all. But I'm gonna be walking to the old Jewish cemetery in Sarajevo. This is a place I've never been before. I came here, you know, in 2018. I didn't really give myself, you know, enough time to see all the major touristic sites. But I am kind of hoping it will be open today, even though it is high holiday in Kippur. We walked past the synagogue about a few minutes ago. Uh, it was closed, and I was expected because they do not open and do tours on high holidays. As a matter of fact, I kind of think it must be hard for the Jews of Sarajevo to have a minion of like 10 adult men to do prayer service. I do know they do prayer service on Friday nights, but I'm not going to be here Friday night, I'm going to be in Vienna. But, if you are of the Jewish faith, Bosnia is a really beautiful country to come to. Uh, there's only one active synagogue here in Sarajevo, the Shephardic synagogue is actually a museum. And then but you'll be able to find like all the abandoned synagogues all over Bosnia. And most are, they're trying to like rebuild the shul that was torn down by the communists back in the day. It would be good for that to be restored. Wow, this house has signs of damage from the war. And there's a man buried there who passed away like in 2006. So, yeah, this is a small Muslim burial ground. Mosques over there. It says it's going to be like a 2.2 kilometer walk to get to the Jewish cemetery. But I'm only halfway there. I didn't want to take a taxi like I did last night to get to that crappy hostel. So I'm just going to walk it. Alrighty. I'm in walking distance to the old Jewish cemetery. Got my kippa on right now. Be respectful and all. <sighs> that kippa from Stanford Hill. Now, I've had this kippa for as long as I've lived in London. And it's traveled the world with me for a bit. <sighs> yes. So, there's a good closing in now on the Jewish cemetery. Which, I'd be like the surprise that some of the graves would be going back like hundreds of years old, I guess. I'm like talking, you know, maybe the Sephardic times, arrival. But you think a cemetery that old, they got people buried from what, 19th, 18th century, people buried from the Ottoman times, and also people buried in recent times, because one of the last few Ladino speakers in Bosnia passed away last year. And the interesting thing about him was he was a resistance fighter in the war. He joined the Partisans like so many other Jewish people did in Yugoslavia. And he kept his traditions alive being of Shephardic descent. He spoke Ladino. But sadly, Ladino is dying out. Uh, you can still find Ladino being spoken, I guess, in Israel. And... Uh, I, I'm pretty sure Ladino could be spoken by Spanish Jews living in Spain right now. But it is a language that is like really ex almost extinct, I hate to say, but people want to keep it alive. So finally I've made it in the old Jewish cemetery. I have had to cross over this brick wall. Gate was open, I guess. But, oh God, finally here, despite the muddy grounds. Anyway, we've got these old round tombstones, which is, I'm kind of assuming these are like three centuries old, I guess. And down here, that's the memorial to the Holocaust, to those Bosnian Jews who died during World War II in the Holocaust. Because they were taken to other parts of Yugoslavia, where they had concentration camps in Serbia and in Croatia, like Jasenovic. I've been to a few concentration camps in all of Yugoslavia, like in Croatia and Serbia, and God, this is 
getting my feet wet doing this. Okay. Uh, but these people, um, they died uh, now of missed this August 41, so that's during the war, yeah. These are people. And the memorial says, Yasinov Vik Dank of Vik Yasinov Lobograd Os Vik Birken Belizen. Wow. Traditionally, when they bury somebody in a Jewish grave, they always put the Hebrew year. So it's 15, no, sorry, 5683. So if you can f figure that out from the, the Hebrew and the Gregorian calendar, then good luck. Um, oh God, oh God. See, there's no pathway in this cemetery, so. I really think I should be contributing a bit more money to, to this cemetery to be up kit. Oh. Uh. Uh. I've got some big tombs over here. Uh. 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 That's all in Hebrew. Uh, but there's some written stuff. Daniel Salom. 1901. So we got some burials from before the war, like that man, uh, Eliza was buried in 1939. He's rolled 1937. Quite surprised how they were able to like last, uh, I mean, survive damage from the war, I guess. Um, uh, uh, this is like a Jewish memorial center where they have the funerals. I believe. Um, Christ, oh, it's, it's fallen off. Yeah. Simon uh, Papo, 1932. Some barrels of the 20th century and all. Ricky Cohen Rod Salom, 1928, 83. Oh, wait, oh, here's a stairway I should have taken. I should actually come through that entrance. Oh. It's getting wet. Oh, damn. We have a grave of those people who died during World War One, from 1914 to 1918. May their memory live forevermore. So this is the old Sephardic synagogue, which is much older than the Ashkenazi synagogue of the river. It says here, Laura Pau Bohoreta, first and best known Jewish woman writer from Boston who wrote in Judeo Spanish. Uh, <coughs> So it says here, Sephardic Jews fleeing from the Requisition in Spain and Portugal in 1492, 496, settled in the lands of the Ottoman Empire, brought him to the Sidju Fisheria Court records in Sarajevo. Records that Jewish migrants from Spain were living in Sarajevo in 1568. In 1581, the Bayer of Ramallah, Siva Pasha, built residential quarters for Jewish refugees known as Siva Pasha Han, like a hostel. And the synagogue was built in Velika Avila alongside the hostel. The hand was damaged by fire on several occasions. The last reference to its still standing dates from 1846. The construction of the first religious building for the Sarai of the Jews known as Il Kalrandia began in 1581 with permission from the Imperial Divan. The synagogue was damaged by fire on several occasions with the worst damage in 1697 and 1788. The building acquired present day appearance in the early 19th century during World War II. The synagogue was ransacked and demolished in 1941, after which it was used to suppress the Jews. 
as a storage at the end of the war. In 1957, it was restored. In 1966, the synagogue was turned into a Jewish musician, museum of Bosnia and Herzegovina. In 2003, the damage to the building caused by shells fired on a siege in 1992. And then the fire was made good. So it's been through a lot, like through wars, through all sorts of things and all. And it's still stand handing. Sephardic synagogue. It's class three, both in Mark or a pound fifty, my currency. We'll get inside. Um, fortunately, it's not a, an active synagogue on the Ashkenazi one, but it's restored to remember what it was in the glory days and how the Sephardics were the first Jewish people to come to Sarajevo, even though there had been Jewish people in Sarajevo the years prior. You've got all sorts of different relics, artifacts, you know, prayers, uh, even knives that were used for, for circumcision. Uh, there's even this book called the Haggadah, which is about like this Spanish Jews. It was a book that goes back like centuries old, and in World War II, it was actually like hidden in a mosque, and then in the war it was. Uh, let's take it to a bank vault. Quite. Okay. So I've got photographs of families. My families. And the uh, rises of other nations in Bosnia. Uh, We remember there was a woman in this list and during the Bosnian War, uh, here she is, um, Hergeda Zenvia, she was actually transported to Jerusalem for safety because in World War II her f Muslim family had sheltered the Jewish family from Sarajevo. So they were awarded the righteous among the nations. So it says here, in the wake of the war in Bosnia 1994, Zabin Haggadah and a family invited by the Israeli authorities to come to Israel. So the Kabbalah family warmly received them and took the measures to ease their stay in Israel. Her children actually converted to Judaism and she passed away in Jerusalem a year later. Okay, very well. During in the war, if you were Jewish, not only did you have to wear a star David, but you wore a war letter Z, which is kind of that's the Bosnian, Serbian, Latin for like J, I guess. So that's the M button they had to wear. Um, Oh yes, this is at the cemetery. Uh, victims of fast the Jewish cemetery in Sarajevo. I saw that earlier today. Like, how many Jews of Sarajevo were resistant fighters in the war? Um, Morris. Excuse me. <laughs> actually gotten up by then. Yeah, all these people fought fascism. And I think I know about this guy. He passed away recently, Morris Salom Marco. the Spanish combatant and participant in the war liberation. National heroes. Mm. 
Jeez, he took part in World War II. Just a prisoner, Mira Papo. The red triangle. Jews, pre war opinion, parents of fascism. Prisons, the Astache, because the Astache were in charge as part of Bosnia, as well as like independent state of Croatia. The horrific things that happened in World War II. Cemetery of Jewish victims who died in the Dakova concentration camp. So, Dakova is a concentration camp. I believe that's probably in Croatia, or somewhere in Bosnia, but it's a camp I've never been to. Um, the primary school of the Sephardi Jews turned into the NDH, Independent State of Croatia Police. A synagogue in Measure, Sarajevo. Use as a collective center. That's actually that building's still standing. It's not a synagogue. Um, concentration camps. Uh, Yasinovic, I've been there. Stara Gracia, Bergen, um, Dahu, and Stara. Okay, these are where Bosnian Jews were taken during World War Two. So we put the Ark over there, and the Ten Commandments Moses gave us, and then these hit things from the Torah, and the prayer books, they got Talid, which you, you wear when you pray, um, you got uh, a rabbi wears like really old hat and all. Oh, it's actually in uh, Serbian or Bosnian. Hm. Wow. 